There's a lot of misperceptions right now about IPD and lean, um, partly because we're just a little further in the adoption curve, and so in both cases, the earlier projects are not exactly the um, archetypical projects, and that, but those tend to be the ones that people remember. So when we think about the myths associated with both IPD and lean, um, what we, and for this presentation, I've highlighted five myths that we think really need a closer look now that we've seen more projects. So the first one that I'll talk about is the idea that you have to have an A team, and if you have an A team of players, then the delivery method doesn't really matter and the contract method doesn't really matter. When in fact what we're finding through these studies is that you can actually foster positive behavior and build the team. And I think this is really encouraging because it's hard to say that you're going to have the very top quality people on every project, on every case, but you can actually build this behavior by attention to how many people are going to be in that risk reward pool, um, how you're mentoring those people, how you're bringing them on, and then also the clarity around um, who's not performing to the culture the, of accountability that you're setting up, um, how do you get them off. We also uh, have a myth about IPD contracts being too complicated, that they're not worth it for the amount of effort that they that you spend developing them, and that lean tools are very rigid and that you have to do all this training to follow them in exactly the right way. And we're finding it's a lot more flexible than people think. First of all, the investment of time to develop an IPD contract or to work through lean and decide which tools are going to be the most effective for your team is really valuable time and that is actually team building time. And so to think that it's just too much time and it's not worth it, there's a huge return on that investment. What we're also finding is that um, the teams are quite varied in how they're actually applying the lean tools um, and processes and how they're uh, using particular terms of the IPD, as well as in how they use their co-location, um, how they use validation. So there is variety, there's no rigidity about this. The next myth that we talked about is about IBD really being large complex healthcare and there's no evidence that small projects can't equally benefit. They do have to be scaled and so we, we need to know more about that but it's it's pretty much clear that you can have a team that's brand new to IPD that can be equally successful as to one that is 50% or more experienced. So the idea that it's only really good for um, IPD and lean if you have large complex projects is really not true. The other thing we see a lot of confusion around is the value to the owners because they're not seeking bids and they're not going out to the market, are they really getting the best value? The other thing we see a confusion around is, is the team making a profit because the way the IPD contract puts their profit at risk, are they actually getting paid back? And it's a little bit hard to say the pure results from this because what we actually are finding is things about um, the value for the owner when you think about cost and schedule. Some of that depends on how well they set those cost and schedule targets. In these projects we did find 100% of the owners were met or exceeded their their expectations. But in actuality, if you look, not all the project teams were under the target. Some of them were just a bit over, and a number of them were under. Same with budget, that one was over and others were at, and then some were under. When you look at the teams, again, the uh, picture around money is a little bit hard to say. We are seeing some reports where people are saying they're making 20 to 30 percent more than what they would make under non-IPD projects. But I do think that you're generally seeing the team uh, collectively with the owner determine a target cost, and then in the end, they did drive the original allowable cost way below market, and then their profit was distributed. The last last myth is really one that, personally for me, I really was in the, the camp of saying that IPD and IPD light are essentially the same, when in fact now we're really finding that there is a difference, that the behaviors are pretty strikingly different with those that don't have skin in the game. And when they're not part of the signatory pool or they're outside the bubble, as we might call it, they do behave differently. And then those that are within the signatory pool also behave much more collaboratively. There's a lot more fluidity in how they're willing to uh, trade scope, and they're much more willing to call out behavior that's not productive. And they're also reporting a lot more fun and enjoyment a lot more time being spent on positive things as opposed to negative things or conflict um, and just how they're distributing the, um, their responsibilities um, is very uh, positive and collaborative. So I do think that it's more than just signing charters but actually having the skin in the game is important. This research makes it clear that a lean culture along with strategies and tools can significantly impact project outcomes. A purposeful investment to engage and train a team in some or many of these practices will improve the business outcomes for all stakeholders. Don't let a specific contract or practice stand in your way. There's a lot to learn. Why not get started today? For more on LCI research and tools to assist you in your lean journey, go to leanconstruction.org or seek out your local community of practice.